Hey guys, Joster here. Welcome back to the channel. I have another video with the Samsung QN90B 4K HDR TV Quantum Dot from this year 2022. This is the 50 inch version. And on my previous video, I already did the unboxing. I'm gonna share some of the settings that I'm using for movies. I also share some features, including that you can connect a camera on top of this TV. But in this video, I'm going to focus more on gaming. So I connected my Xbox Series X and also the PlayStation 5. I'm going to share you some of the gaming settings that I'm using and also features like Game Motion Plus, which is very helpful in some games right here on the PS5 and also on the Xbox. And I'm going to show you how it can enhance your gaming experience. So be sure to like and subscribe to the channel. I'm Jolster and let's do this. So before I continue, let me just show you a little bit how beautiful this game looks. Oh my God. This game looks gorgeous. This TV is very, very bright and colors look just amazing. I'm really, really enjoying this TV a lot. I'm going to share with you my settings that I'm using right now, but there's also another feature that I believe is exclusive for uh, Samsung TVs and it's super helpful, especially for, for this game and that is Game Motion Plus. So let me just go into the game bar right here on the PS, no, sorry, on the on the TV, Samsung TV. So this is the game bar that you're gonna get. Uh, you can access game bar by pressing the play button on the uh, Samsung TV remote controller. Just press it and hold it, and this will show up over here. You have information like input lag, uh, game mode, you have different settings right here. I'm using standard right now. You can use RPG, you can use RTS, FPS. I really like standard. You can also customize this to your own taste if you want to, but I still, I think standard looks pretty good. This only changes the, uh, the way that the picture looks. Okay. Over here we have TV sound, help guide, and then we're going to go into the game settings. Right here, we, we get access to, for example, game mode automatically, surround sound, dynamic equalizer, dynamic black equalizer. You can actually increase this if you want. I don't like to use this a lot because it only introduces like white throughout the whole picture. So I don't, I don't actually like that. Game motion plus, this is super, super cool, very helpful. So basically this is a combination of gaming, um, no, motion interpolation and game mode uh, to smooth the entire picture so it says right here enhance screen sharpness to optimize fast moving images such as rpgs and adventure games so this is recommended for adventure games like this one horizon forbidden west or rpgs i wouldn't use it in fast-paced games like call of duty because it does introduce input lag not by a lot but i will show you the difference right in just a little bit so here are two settings blur reduction and judder reduction now if you use this blur reduction zero and then judder reduction to 10 this will give you the illusion like if you're playing the game oh hold on like if you're playing the game at 60 frames per second so in this case this game has two options let's go into the settings real quick you have two options resolution and performance now a lot of people re didn't really like performance because obviously you lose some of the resolution the game doesn't look as sharp as it would be in resolution mode i i think still looks really good right but if you get closer to it if you're so used to resolution you do st start noticing that it's not as sharp as it would be right and there's some other problems people were complaining about i honestly it wasn't a big deal to me but there's some things that this game is being patched right now. So let's go back into settings. So um, if you go into performance, obviously the game runs very smooth at like around 60 frames per second. But if you go into resolution, the game does look sharper, but then the performance drops to 30 FPS. Now I'm using Game Motion Plus. Let me tell you guys, this helps a lot. This enhances the picture a lot not it's not perfect but it surely does enhances the picture the motion especially when you're panning the camera sideways like this this helps a lot and this is a really cool feature about samsung gaming tvs 
the uh, Game Motion Plus if you want to play games like this. So now I'm able to play at high resolution. I mean, the game looks really sharp. There's a lot of detail right here on the ground. And with the illusion of performance of 60 frames per second. Now there's another option as well. Let's go back into the uh, game bar right here. And I'm going to go back into the game settings. Let's go in game motion plus settings. Now, if I want to have the illusion of playing at 120 frames per second, I have to increase blur reduction. Now, what this happens is that I start noticing more like a, I don't know, the, the, the game feels there's more blur throughout the whole, when I, especially when I'm panning the camera. I kind of don't like that at all. But obviously, guys, this is totally optional. If you want to use this, it's completely up to you. I think it looks fantastic. I really like this feature from Samsung TVs. Now, there's a couple of negatives about using Game Motion Plus. One of them is that depending on how you have the blur reduction and judder reduction set up, you're going to see some ghosting around your character. I mean, it's not a lot, but if you pan the camera like this, I notice a little bit of ghosting around the character. You see? That is something that you might notice it's not a big deal to me because it's not that very noticeable but I know some of you guys are going to mention that so just might as well just mention it before um, another negative is that the input lag is increased so there's a few options here if you go to game the game bar you guys notice that the input lag you have fast faster and the fastest now between these three obviously the fastest is the best one the input lag in the fastest mode can go up to 9 milliseconds, around 9.6 milliseconds if you're using the fastest mode input lag. But you can't use with Game Motion Plus. If you turn this on, Game Motion Plus will shut off automatically. So the only way to use Game Motion Plus is to use the fast mode, which this one you get around 30 milliseconds, between 27 and 30 milliseconds of input lag. Is that noticeable when gaming? Not really, unless you're playing like multiplayer games like Call of Duty or Warzone, which is very competitive. But if you're playing games like this one, Horizon Forbidden West, or games that are locked at 30 frames per second, I don't think it's a big deal. It's not really that noticeable. All right, so now let's jump into the Xbox Series X because there's another caveat about the game Motion Plus. So here on the Xbox, we have even more options. We can run games at 4K or 1440p, which is really nice. Refresh rate up to 120 hertz if we want to, yes. 4K TV details, you have everything here available except for Dolby Vision, as you guys already know. So uh, Samsung doesn't support Dolby Vision, but it does have uh, HDR Plus gaming coming soon to uh, PC, I believe. Hopefully consoles adapt to that as well. So the other caveat is that it, you, it doesn't work with VRR or variable refresh rate. So you have the choice of either use VRR or Game Motion Plus. Now, throughout my gameplay experience right now, if you want to play Warzone, I will highly recommend to use VRR instead. You don't really need Game Motion Plus. But games like Dying Light 2, oh man, Game Motion Plus does make a significant difference if i want to use resolution oh my god yeah it does make a, a big difference but it's 30 frames per second and in this game it looks really crappy so this is where game motion plus comes in i want to go back into the menu game motion plus and i'm going to activate the game motion settings Let's go and let's turn this on. And I reduce the blue reduction to zero and the judder to 10. That way I can have the 60 FPS, uh, you know, sort of like gameplay or smoothness. So this, this is what I like. I wish this game originally came like this, you know, 4K resolution or at least some better performance in the resolution mode. And this will help you a lot. Oh my god, I barely made it, but yes, I did make it, and it helps a lot. 
All right, guys, so let's go back to the Xbox. Let's go into the settings. I'm going to now push this TV to the fullest when it comes down to gaming. Oh, by the way, if you see those horizontal lines across the TV, that is from the camera, okay? You don't see that in person. Just want to clarify. So let's go into refresh rate, 120 hertz. Yes, let's do that. Let's change that resolution. 4K TV details, everything is green check marks except for Dolby Vision. Let's go and turn on variable refresh rate. We want to use that because I am going to jump into Call of Duty. And obviously, I want to play to the fullest when it comes down to Call of Duty. Let's go. We're going to play a little bit of payload. Now, there's another cool thing about this. So if you press this center button on the controller, you can actually see the information right there on top. We have HDR 120 Hertz and also Dolby Atmos is enabled. This TV, the sound on this TV, it's very impressive. Even though it's very small, it sounds really, really nice, clear, loud, and it has this virtual surround sound. It's really, really nice. You don't really need Game Motion Plus. There you go. God. Oh, you killed my friend. Yeah, this gameplay is fantastic. You're gonna love this TV for Call of Duty. I mean, it looks great and it runs. The performance is excellent. All right, so for HDR settings, I'm going to jump into Far Cry 6 because this game looks so colorful and so beautiful. And I think this is where you're going to appreciate all this uh, settings, right? But let's go into the actual game settings. So let's go into here, game settings. Game mode is on. And then over here, black equalizer, have this to zero. HDR tone mapping, you can also use this game HDR this is HGIG if you want to use that and it does improve the picture as a matter of fact I don't know if you guys can see it in the background but it adds more tones like shadow details way much better right also here I'm using in advanced mode in HDR tone mapping although HDR 10 plus gaming is not really supported with the with the consoles not even there's no games that's actually supported but I am just have this in advanced because it says basic mode provides the most accurate representation of the game's original creative because you also have the uh, option of basic, right? But advanced mode provides enhanced representation of game content to maximum visual impact. That's why I'm just using advanced, although I do have to admit that I do not see any difference as much as I see with game HDR, um, HDIG or pretty much like tone mapping that's what it does yeah HDR tone mapping all right so let's go back here and let's go into the picture right here this is where you want to go into expert settings here I have brightness at 50 and contrast at 50 now this is like supposed to be a hundred percent but now you know Samsung is calling it 50 that's a maximum sharpness okay so this is very interesting Sharpness is not the same on every TV. Every TV is going to give you different details when it comes down to sharpness. Obviously, you do not want to use this to the full extension of it because it's going to introduce some particles. If you get close to it, you start seeing some um, pixelation around the edges. It looks really bad when you have all the way up. But also, if you reduce sharpness, at least with this TV, I notice that the image does get... A little soft I don't know if you guys can see it you might not be able to see it but if you get close to the image to the picture you start noticing that it gets a little soft so at the same time you don't want to use sharpness you don't want to not use sharpness I feel like in level 5 is the best option that's when I got closer to the TV and I start noticing that you know the picture got a little soft you don't want to do that either so I feel like in level 5 is a sweet spot all right let's go back into color right here color it's a level 30 which is a little bit over the middle which is supposed to be in 25 and i still think that yeah 30 is it's fine that's how it came out of the box that's how samsung is recommending and i think it's fine let's go down here to local dimming local dimming i use this in high all the time 
unless you want to get like a darker image you can turn it to low you only have three options standard and high you do you don't get to turn this off but i think high is the best representation for local dimming contrast enhancer you can actually turn this off but the whole picture gets kind of like really really dim a little bit darker than it should that i feel it's supposed to be so you can use the, this one in low or you can use it in high if you want to have the highest brightest picture possible now keep in mind that even if you use this in high i do not notice any loss of shadow details i still think the picture looks fantastic it's just look a little bit brighter but um i think still i think colors still look vibrant and there's really good shadow details i mean i don't see why you should not use it unless you want like a dark image maybe you if you are in a dark room you might want to turn this off but honestly i will just leave it in low for now let's go to color tone now this one is usually in standard which is okay my personally i like to use it in warm one because it has this a little bit of yellowish tone and it looks really nice i like it also for movies warm one or at least yeah warm one or warm two is what you know the filmmaker mode uses white balance no i don't mess around with white balance unless you want to professionally calibrate this tv shadow details now this is this is really nice feature but honestly i do not use it a lot because it, it does introduce white throughout the whole picture so i recommend to use this one in zero you do not need shadow details so color space now you have a few options here automatic negative i used to recommend automatic when using hdr but honestly now that i've seen these two comparisons i feel like native looks the best at least colors they look a little bit more saturated they look more vibrant there's more life in the colors that's what i think look at this for example red although automatic looks a little bit more natural ah, man it's it's hard to make this like a good decision if you want to have more natural colors i guess automatic is the way to go if you want a little bit of more saturation i think they they add more saturation throughout the whole colors when you use native what do you guys think man it's a really really hard decision to make but i tend to go for native just because this is a video game and in video games i usually want to see games to stand out more you know i like my colors to be more vibrant and that's it that's about the settings that uh you have right here with this tv which it's very easy to to just change and play around with it's not complicated it's i think it's super super easy all right guys so that's it for this video i i don't want to make it too long i mean it's already long enough but uh there's so many things that i want to cover with this tv i mean th there's so many features and i still think i have more more videos to make i mean i still want to connect it to my pc to see how it performs with 144 hertz of refresh rate and hdr i do have a pc that has hdmi 2.1 so i want to test that I also have another video with a comparison with the LG C1 OLED. Both of them are almost the same size. I mean, the OLED is 48 inch and this one is 50 inch. So I want to see how they compare side by side. That will be a very interesting video. So if you enjoy this kind of content, please subscribe to the channel. Like this video if you enjoyed it. Let me know if you have any questions, if there's a specific game that you want to see or maybe uh, some feature that you want to see while connecting it with my PC. In the meantime, thank you so much for stopping by. I'm Joster, and I'll see you guys on the next one. Joster out!